podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 20% off your new account for six months, go to Squarespace.com and use offer code Android 11. And by Ford, featuring voice activated Sync App Link. Now you can control select smartphone apps with your voice, so you keep your hands on the wheel and you keep your eyes on the road. Check it out in the 2012 Ford Fiesta and at Ford.com slash technology. <laughs> Welcome to All About Android, episode 33, recorded on Monday, November 7th, your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Eileen Rivera. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And today, I'm happy to introduce, I'm a big fan of hers, Joanna Stern from TheVerge.com. Welcome very much to All About Android. Hey, welcome. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on the show. Um, yeah, I've been reading your articles for a while, even, you know, on Engadget, and this is my next, and, you know. Awesome. Uh, we're so happy to have you, because I know you know a lot about... And now of The Verge. And we The Verge. We finally have The Verge. Yeah, exactly. it looks really, really yeah. slick. I'm really happy. It was very awesome. impressive. Yeah, I, yeah actually, totally. that was, yeah, it was like, oh, this is different. Like, yeah, it was good, so. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah we no. were working on something for six months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You guys weren't just sitting around. I mean, you guys are in it to win it, it seems like, with that website. We it's awesome. We are. We definitely are. All right. Well, this week we're going to be discussing more ice cream sandwich updates, uh, whether or not we hate honeycomb. We'll answer that. Uh, the Nook tablet was just announced. Joanna was at that event today. And uh, Ron has a hotly anticipated review of the Google TV. Remember, he's been updating and updating and updating his unit for months. Uh, plus, we have another grab bag of apps I think all of the apps are all over the place. Can't yeah, wait to get started. So let's just dive into the news. All right. So uh, first off, I'll just start off by saying that there is a really good post um, on Engadget uh, that pretty much summarizes uh, what devices are going to be getting ice cream sandwich because that is kind of top of mind That's for the everybody in, in the Android world right now. Yeah, yeah. What, what and when are they going to get it? So check out Engadget. But it's more specifically today, uh, HTC announced specifics on their ice cream sandwich update. And it's important to note in the beginning that what they say is that this is the, this is the first wave of, uh, of announcements around uh, their phones and ice cream sandwich. So if your phone isn't on this list, don't worry. I'd imagine they'd have to add to this list because it's kind of a, sh a small list at this point. HTC Sensation, Sensation XL, Sensation XE, as well as the Resound, of course, uh, a, uh, HTC Evo 3D, Evo Design 4G, and Amaze 4G. And, and I think the big lesson, at least uh, that, that I took away, not only from Ice Cream Sandwich, but also from the Google TV update, is that don't blame Google if you haven't gotten the update exactly. yet. It's yeah. the manufacturer, a lot of times it's the manufacturers of the handsets that are handling it. Like, so it's HTC determining what devices are going to get it and when, you know, like in the case of Google, the Google TV update, which we're going to talk about a little later, um, it was Sony, it wasn't Google that was holding it back, you know, mm -hmm. so like, so people looking for where it's coming from, look to the device manufacturers as opposed to Google themselves. Google's giving it to the manufacturers and say, okay, now roll it out to your people. Sure. So. Well, and like we talked about last week, some of these devices, the older devices, just won't be able to handle ice cream sandwich. Yeah. So, unfortunately, you'll have to upgrade if you really want it. No. Yeah. Like and, the yeah. Nexus One. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think it also, like, it's putting these new handsets, you know, we're seeing, like, sort of before the end of the year, these sort of Halo handsets, the Motorola Razr is a good example. We were just reviewed that today. And it's like, we we don't want to knock it for not having ice cream sandwich right now, or we don't want to knock Motorola for it, but it's sort of like, you kind of have to. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, that's one of them. And the Resound is another one. It comes out in, you know, a couple of weeks. And these are like really high-end spec phones, and they've got all the other specs to make it competitive, but it's like, oh, right now you got to wait till next year to get ice cream sandwich on it. And, you know, the Galaxy Nexus will be out in a couple weeks and that will have 
the brand spanking new operating system. Yeah, exactly. That'll have it right off the well, top. And so I think that's part of Samsung that. and Google's strategy with it. I mean, like the, the, that's the phone mm -hmm. right now. That's the phone they want you to use. And so there's going to be, I wouldn't be surprised if there's exclusive, not exclusivity, but like certain contingencies around when it can be rolled out and on what devices even, you know, not even regarding the older devices, but they want to push, this is their pony. This is the one they're going to push. Oh yeah, definitely. It is a, it's, it's Samsung definitely has an exclusive on, you know, not only on, you know, that handset they, they worked with Google on it, but on the actual operating system. I think, I mean, from what we can tell, it's basically the beginning of December. So it seems like they've got the exclusive period till then. At least that's like sort of according to rumors and what I've heard from, from companies mm -hmm. off the record in, mm -hmm. in some senses. But like, um, you know, they're saying uh, even, I think Andy Ruman had said, you know, some of the tablets would get it a couple weeks after that when the source code goes out. So, so um, you said um, <laughs> you said you're giving them, you know, those units like the the Razer uh, and the Resound a little ding. Does that mean that you're sort of telling people to possibly hold off and get the Nexus first, the Galaxy Nexus? Yeah, first? I mean, I think I think definitely that's. I mean, that's the route we went with in the Razer. Um, there were some other things uh, wrong with the device in the review. I mean, it is overall a really good phone and one of the best phones on Verizon. But Verizon is getting a ton of crazy spec phones this yes. uh, you know holiday season. I mean, I do not know how they've done it. I actually wish it was like sort of a story to tell. I mean, obviously they've got one of the best networks in the U.S., if not the best, but they have just lined up a crazy sort of family of devices. And you've got the Galaxy Nexus hitting in a couple weeks. The Razer hit this or this week or next. I think it's on the 11th. Uh, and then you've also got the Resound hitting next week. Uh, or is it next week? I think that's the 17th. I don't even know what date it is. So uh, I can just list you release dates because <laughs> I end up writing about those. Uh, so it's sort of like, how do you compare these? A lot of them have the same specs. They've got really high resolution displays. They've got dual core processors. They've got LTE. They're all these sort of commonalities, but like you get that ice cream sandwich variable in there, you're like, this is sort of, you know, this is going to be the halo one. And it's also the one that's sort of supported the most by Google. Yeah. And they always say, yes, you know, the Razor and the Resound will get updates. But, you know, if you learned in the past, those updates get pushed all the time for whatever reason. And um, I don't like to wait. Honestly. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. like, I think people kind of have a sour taste in their mouth, you know, expecting, you know, having heard before, like you take the Thunderbolt the th as, I was as, about a, to say, as a the prime Thunderbolt. example, yeah. which pretty yeah. much at launch, they were like, oh yes, this is going to be getting gingerbread soon. They and just that got just it. got it. And that's like what, <laughs> nine months? eight months later, yeah, nine months time. later. Yeah. It's a long time. I mean, when you consider that you've got a two-year contract on these devices and a lot of times they end up stop, stopping, you know, receiving updates after a year and a half for, for it to take nine months for you to get that update to an OS that even right now is still out of date. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a slap. I think effect. actually HTC could be one of the worst. Mm. And I think that has to do with, obviously, with Sense and the fact that they've got yeah. to then optimize it for the next operating system. And that has to go through a bunch of tweaks on their end. And it's not very simple for them to do. I mean, uh, I think, you know, they've said with the Resound and these other ones were early 2012. Um, mm -hmm. But like, who knows what, what yeah, that means. Early 2012 yeah. could be the first three to four months of 2012. Yeah, it could be if April. If not later. I I was mean, who knows? I was preparing a devil's advocate. Just be patient. You'll get it eventually kind of argument. <laughs> but then I realized I'm the guy who sat at home hitting update, 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 <laughs> exactly. update. So I can't. I, right. I have no leg to stand on in the devil's advocate argument. I mean, it's 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 tough. I mean, the more kind of bloatware, or if you want to call sense that, or whatever stuff that the manufacturers do, it's, it's, it, it's a challenge. And the thing is, six months, seven months from now, you know, will we forget about about it will so it will be rolled out and we'll be well into 2012 and will it even matter probably not but right now it's very top of mind yeah, yeah. absolutely right. all right yeah, well, someone is correcting me in, in chat here that htc is actually one of the best and that that i do know that they are definitely better than samsung i i should put that disclaimer in there they you know samsung has been known to be one of the worst and that again has to probably do with touch whiz and the optimizations they want to bring to that okay. but all right. Well, uh, moving on, um, in the Google world, in the Google sphere, uh, there's a lot of brands and pages now. And I just wanted to highlight... Today, today was a very busy day. I know. Oh, I'm sure it was for you. Yeah, was. I wanted to highlight that Android has its own uh, brand page on uh, Google+. Plus, and many of you who listen to the show and watch the show, you know that we're all on Google+. Plus, uh, pretty, active, uh, really. pretty actively. So there's the Android page. And hey, guess what I did today? What did you did? Well, 
I made a all about Android Google page. Very nice. Cool. There's nothing to, uh, on there yet. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we <laughs> we were rushing this is. during yeah. our yeah. during, during you know, us sitting here Prep. while everything. I feel was like we should wait, like this is probably more appropriate for this week in Google, but I've got a long list of like, oh Google, I really hope you change the way this works because well, right like now it's not. And yeah, just the, the yeah. yeah it, it's they they should look at Facebook's page product a lot more before they roll this out. But okay. it's cool to finally be able as somebody who manages mm -hmm. brands and stuff like that on. It's cool to have a place to go, especially isn't it? You know, now for all about Android, have yeah. a, spot, a home on Google+. Plus. We have a little home. We'll have a Twit page yeah. eventually. Leo will set that up. Oh, and you have, coming. A, you have a the Verge, Verge page as well, too. right? We do have one. You know, I, I have to admit, and if you look at my Google Plus page, I think <laughs> the last update I made was like, I need a reminder to use this more. Yeah. <laughs> and I forget to use it all the time. And I really do like updating there, but I always forget. Yeah, mm. that's we we talked about that post show I think last week or the week mm -hmm. before. I have a hard time getting Google Plus. You guys have done. I'm, I'm envious at how integrated you are and on it all the time you are. I just can't get it into my mix. I don't know why. Yeah, and uh, for me, and I, this is one of the things I've said is I think that for me, the fact that it doesn't, they don't have third party apps and they're not plugging into third party apps right now. And I know, uh, did that happen or it's going to happen soon? Um, is a really big thing because I'm like constantly in Tweet Deck. And mm. I feel like if there yep. was an option there or there was an option in another third party app where I could actually update from there, I would do it. Yeah, no, I'm the you same. Know, maybe I'm, I would, you know, a longer update. You know, when I get that little thing in TweetDeck that's like, oh, long update, I don't, then maybe I'll just put on Google+. Plus. Right. But like, I don't want to go open the browser window. And even though I live in Gmail, I don't know. No, I, Joanna, you and I are in it's the a very, problem, very similar you know? places, very similar worlds. I have two monitors at home, and my main big monitor is browser and email and stuff like that. Then I've got my laptop monitor to the left with TweetDeck, and yeah. it's just going all day. And I post tweet, TweetDeck posts to Twitter and to Facebook, and I just can't. And I have to. And the thing is also with I use Gmail for work, and I've got a personal Gmail. And then with the accounts get all messed up, and when I have Google Plus open in another tab, I and I go back oh, to my totally. Gmail for work. I logged. I'm logged out. So it's just it's a mess. And someday it'll get cleaner. Someday I'll get there. I know we're off topic. This isn't very Android specific, but it's no. it's, it's, a, it's a Google frustration. Well, it sort of is, because yeah. it's also like on my phone, I sometimes forget it to use. You know, even it's like, you know Android is the one of the best apps for it, right? Mm -hmm. The iOS app is sort of yeah. a little bit behind, mm -hmm. or the last time I saw it, I, I haven't seen it in a couple of weeks. Um, but it's like then I forget to go to that because I'm in TweetDeck. Yeah. So yeah. maybe if there was one app that sort of plugged them all in, it would would make sense. Yeah. It's funny for me, and just bringing it back to the Android app, since since we're kind of talking about it a little bit, I find that I almost get too inundated with like notifications mm -hmm. and contact through it. It's the thing that I love about Google Plus is that I get a lot of, of like user engagement and mm -hmm. you know fans of the show. Like <laughs> if I make a post about Android, I'm going to get a lot of kind of co uh, you know cooperative kind of communication between everybody. But then when it comes to my phone, it's like literally buzzing every minute oh, I because there's so much oh, of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a blessing it's, and a curse. And admittedly, I try, I try to acknowledge that this is a problem I think very few of us have. I mean, the, our yeah. chosen professions and what we do here and where we're <laughs> We're living publicly and we're, you know, yeah. hosting shows and things like that. But, like, the first thing I do is I install an app and I turn notifications off, like just yeah. the Facebook app, just those weekend. I'm All like, the time. Well, that's done because they just turn notifications just started lighting up on the Facebook app. I don't know if you noticed it, mm. but I was getting a new notification for every message, for every invite, for everything. Yeah. And I had to go in and turn it all off because it was driving me crazy. I know. So, yeah. yeah. I guess I only use Google Plus mostly. Uh, on the web. Yeah, yeah, so totally. if I'm sitting here and I'm, you know, checking my RSS feeds for a show and then I'm like, oh, look at that interesting article. Then I plop it in, make a little comment, done. I almost, yeah. I mean, I look at the G Plus app every once in a while, but I honestly don't use it as much I'm as I thought make, I would, at least for now. I'm trying to make a more concerted effort to when I post to Twitter for my phone to also post it to, to um, G Plus, but then that also reveals my frustration with copy and paste on the Android phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then I get frustrated and I move on. And so. Well, that'll change with ice cream sandwich right one would hope. yeah i was just about to say i cannot wait for that oh yeah exactly all right well we got an email and yeah. this will get us into another big discussion i think yes so we've got an email um who's uh from marlon also known as the guy from trinidad which is kind of awesome and marlon says hello triple a crew um i have a question that i hope you can answer if not please do a crowdsource and hit me hit me with a reply because i gotta know what do you guys hate uh, why do you guys hate on honeycomb so much wow 
This stems from last Thursday's TNT show where the guests started hating on Honeycomb, and as the resident Android expert, Jason joined in. I have used Honeycomb 3.2 for the past month, and I have no problem with it. But everywhere I turn, I read some expert saying it's just horrible, <laughs> and iOS is so much better. What exactly Which, makes it so horrible? Which, who is the guest? <laughs> what makes it so horrible? Don't you have to get accustomed to all operating systems? Just curious. Please let me know. It so, was Peter Rojas. Yeah, right? it was Peter Rojas of GDGT, and he did go on a tear about Honeycomb on that on that episode. I believe my uh, my reaction to that was one word. Yeah. Like as in a, <laughs> like an affirmation that he made that comment. I didn't join in on this, and, and actually, you're not the type to join in on hate fest. Well, and right? I, well, I, I, well I don't hate honeycomb. Right. There are things actually, that irritate me about it, but I don't hate honeycomb. And yeah. I thought you actually have supported it, and you yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah. So I've been. So I did uh, what he asked here. I, I crowdsourced it, of course, as I like to do on Google Plus. So <laughs> I have the link uh, in the show notes that you can find it. Tw uh, twit TV slash AAA, but I basically put a call out there to just be like, hey, what do you all think of Honeycomb? You know, it's it's kind of seems like a moot point because we're moving beyond Honeycomb, right. but yeah. it's still, you know, it's still a fair question to ask since well, hey, it was kind of a stepping stone to ice cream sandwich. For the majority, people seem to think that, uh, you know, pretty favorably of it, mm -hmm. although I will admit that there is a lot of, like I do, any of the, the not so favorable comments I seem to hear about it do seem to come from kind of tech press and everything, and mm. I, I think there, there must be some sort of kind of... Uh, co co uh, confliction between a uh, conflict, there we go, between those that have <laughs> used an iPad a lot and then go to Honeycomb and realizing that, you know, maybe the experience isn't the same. Well, I think it has to do with our expectations. It has to do with we're, we're see, watching iOS move so quickly and we're watching the iPad move well. And, we're, and personally, I know as an Android user, I was anxious for Android tablets to come out into the, into the market. And not again, not, not as if I live in a, a totally Google TV centric world, but Google is known to roll out something when it's not quite ready for prime well, time. Yeah, and Eric Schmidt yeah. admitted that. Yeah. So, I mean, and I've said this many times and I've reviewed many Honeycomb tablets, but my biggest problem with Honeycomb has never been the OS. It's, it, you know, whether you think it's a little bit confusing to find things or you don't like certain native apps, that's one thing, but I've never really had a problem with that. My bigger problem has always been the apps. And I know I've like sort of beaten this. It's just like, I, I can't, say how many times I've said this and how many reviews I've said this, but you know, I, I do have an iPad and I love my iPad and that's because I really am never spending that much time on the general user interface or the general home screen. I'm always spending time in the apps and like mm -hmm. the apps are so compelling and that's my biggest problem with Honeycomb is I wouldn't really care what was, you know, going on underneath if I had some great quality apps. Uh, the ones I always cite, and I'm sure anyone here is who in, in the chat room or on Twitter who hears this will say, like, I again have beaten this to, I just completely repeat myself is, you know, I, I want a good Twitter app. I want mm -hmm. one that has, you know, some nice panes and I can actually see things within in line, whether it be websites or images. I want a Flipboard reading app, something like that, where I can actually see, you know, compelling online content and read it like a magazine. Um, and then I also want a good Facebook app, even though I just got that on the iPad and I talked about that forever. Um, so my biggest thing, and I know now I'm going to start my rant or I already am. And now I'm ending my rant. <laughs> just on, you're uh, you're going to start your rant. Wow. <laughs> I, I could go on. I could go on. I like her. <laughs> uh, I have gone on for so long on, on the Verge podcast in, in so many places, but it is that app thing. And actually, if you go and listen to the recording of the um, at All Things D a couple weeks ago in Hong Kong, Andy Rubin uh, was the lead speaker. He, he was the first one to go, kick off the show. I specifically asked him, what is the plan for these tablet apps? Because it is a big problem. And he definitely did not really answer my question, which uh, was unfortunate. But uh, our well, it's a big problem. Cream sandwich. Well, yeah, because well, because I don't think it's his answer. It's his thing to answer. I mean, because with, with the apps, I mean, you're in they're in the hands of the developers. It's going to be as good. Uh, the apps are going to be as good as what developers can do with the with the platform. And while yes, Google is responsible for the uh, for the operating system and for the dev kit and all stuff like that. It takes good developers to make good apps, and yeah, uh, um, but that it, it is his. Problem. He's got to go out there, and he's got to be event. You know, he's got to be talking up this operating system, and you know, looking at what what Apple's done on on iOS, and looking what those developers have done, and saying like, we need this sort of compelling experience. So. I mean, yes, it's not totally, you know, in his court. He can't force these people to do it, though, you know, maybe he could in, in some senses, but that that has to be happening. And 
you know, his answer to me was like sort of, well, we believe in one app fits all. And this might segue really nicely, you know, into when you talk about uh, Google TV, which is that he said to me, I want all apps, you know, to run on phones and then I want them to run on tablets and then I want them to run on, uh, you know, TVs um, and, and sort of dealing with the different, you know, development tools to do that. But, you know, in some ways, some of these apps do need to be re rewritten, I think, for the ground up for certain platforms. Yeah, I don't understand why he said that. I mean, I did listen to your question to him and he said, oh, we don't believe that some of the apps need to be rewritten. I absolutely think that they do because this is a different experience on here versus on my phone. And yeah. I actually do agree with you. I actually have an iPad, still have my OG iPad, and um, I'm not getting rid of it because the apps are more compelling there than they are here at the moment. Yeah, I don't know, this will change, but that's, I feel like this is more a tablet, and this is just on how you use the device, but I use it for more of an entertainment purpose. Um, I like doing games. Um, there's just, you know, there's, there, I use it more for the apps than I do for, say, productivity. Now, not everybody's like that, you know. Well, no, but, but the, the whole point of the tablet is to use the apps, and, and I mean, I'm an owner of an iPad and an and a Android tablet, and I don't love either. In fact, I get way more. I get way more frustrated at the iPad more often than I do than the Android tablet. Uh, what all, do you What do you get frustrated by with the, I, with I the get iPad. frustrated with the with the dumb stuff iOS has in there, where you know, in terms of app control and what's running what. I mean, I was just at the gym this morning. I was mm -hmm. trying to watch Pan Am on the ABC app, and the damn, I'm sorry, the the, the, <laughs> dar, the darn um, ad insert and the way it was handling um, streaming video. And but then you have an the ABC app, app on yeah, the yeah, iPad. True. I'm just yes, saying yeah, there no, are more availabilities. Yeah. If yeah. if that so you brought your here? iPad to the gym. I, yes, <laughs> San Francisco. Come on, bring it. I don't know. I don't care about these apps. You brought this iPad to the gym. How's that mobile? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what it's supposed to be? I thought that's what I'm supposed to do with it. I've <laughs> actually brought my iPad to the gym. I was. I watch TV while I'm on the elliptical. It's a nice. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, because well, no, I've no, done no. it before with the phone, and then it was a different experience when I brought this, yeah. and I thought, oh, I could see everything, you know? I don't know. I'm well, like, no, and, yeah, and, and that's the thing it. is, I, I, and I equally bring, I, I have two tablet devices, and I'm at the gym, I'm on the damn elliptical for 40 minutes, I want to watch, both. I want to be entertained, so like this weekend, I brought the Motorola Zoom, and I, yeah. wa and I watched, I caught up on Gossip Girl, and then <laughs> this morning, I brought the iPad, and I watched Pan I'm Am, loving you know, Ron I mean, so, so much right now. <laughs> Just I'm, so much. <laughs> <laughs> but both, both, I just, I think that both are, both are, both have their challenges and neither yes. am I in love with. And the thing is yeah. like, iOS definitely has the sexiness factor. I've always said that as long as we've been doing the show, that iOS always has that sexiness factor over, especially on the iPad as being an iPad user. But, you know, I, I think Google and Android's apps are, it's still a year back. It is still a year yep. back. You know, it's yeah. early, so... Just yeah. and it's and and we we've, we've talked in the past about the chicken and the eggs you know scenario mm -hmm. between developers making apps and <laughs> having a reason to to make those apps for the, you know at this point it's the small number of users hopefully that's what and maybe that's kind of part of what Andy Rubin meant when he says you know that ice cream sandwich is part of the the resolution there in the sense that if if that is meant to be the unifying a version of the OS and developers are already creating things that work on both, then maybe they have more incentive to then take their tablet offering and maybe tweak it to make it a little bit better. You right. know, maybe yeah, it's that's, I'm hoping for that as well. Yeah. All right, well, yeah. let's take a quick break and we'll get to that, uh, the uh, Google TV review here in a few minutes. <laughs> um, but uh, we just want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace.com. They're the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog, and they're awesome. We all have Squarespace <laughs> sites and, uh, and just absolutely love it because it's really easy to use. The UI for creating and managing your site is just, uh, it's dead simple. It's optimized for beginners, as well as if you're a CSS expert, you can get in there and poke around and do some really creative, advanced things as well. There's tons of uh, design templates. Templates. There's apps for iOS, for Android uh, that you can use to update your blog. Uh, online resources, special support team, 24 hours. They have this really cool kind of forum area where uh, Squarespace users can kind of uh, kick around just like advanced tips and ideas, the things that they did with their site to kind of give it a you know an even better, more usable uh, kind of look and feel. So um, there's a really active community uh, around creating these Squarespace sites as well. Um, just tons of blog modules, form builders. 
there's Flickr photo display, uh, social uh, media buttons and elements that you can integrate. It's really super cool. So uh, make sure and uh, check out Squarespace at squarespace.com and uh, use the offer code Android 11 and you can get 20% off for the first six months, which is a really good deal. So that's squarespace.com. Uh, try it out for free. And if you decide you want to uh, continue the site, you can. It's offer code Android 11 and you'll get six months for 20% off and yeah love Squarespace don't forget the Android app is yep. free in the marketplace it's really great uh, it's actually very comparable to the iOS app I use it um, to post maybe I should do it during the show and uh, <laughs> hold <laughs> on let me post. Now. <laughs> what, should we should we throw out a, a, a hey let's do a funny Squarespace <laughs> We had Jason's thumb ring already. Yeah, that's probably down that's now. That's down. That's yeah. thankfully. Oh, Some sort of honeycomb Ron, how about How about ronlovesgoogletv.squarespace.com? How about Ron Loves Gossip Girl? <laughs> yeah, Ron Loves Gossip there we Girl. Go. That's, that's going to be go. an interesting one. <laughs> it's actually gotten really good this season. Really? Yeah, okay, it's right. still going strong. I haven't seen like the last three episodes. No, they were, they were good. They were good. They I like what they did with the book thing. And the Chad, in the book. what's oh, the yeah. uh, password, mm -hmm. Chad? Oh, what what is the password? So we'll check in with that later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see uh, where that goes. What what? Uh, but anyways, thank you, Squarespace, for your support of uh, Twit and all about Android. And uh, everybody check that out. All right, let's dive into hardware. There's so much stuff to get to. All right. So today there was a big announcement, and it had something to do with this. Which oh, actually, this is the old version. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, uh, the Nook... Chain? Oh. Keychain? Yeah. Where's the carabiner? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you guys love to make Yeah, I hang that book. tablet all the time yeah. off my bike. Oh, I, I actually <laughs> what did, I actually read on the verge right. that somebody was saying, you know, um, Flava Flav should be the uh, Nook tablet yeah, mascot totally. and have it hanging hang in. right yeah, here. That's great. I like it. Like that, that was definitely a commenter. I we did not write that in a <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> I do not oh I'm sorry. I should have said it was a commenter. Did, did you write yes. that? You know, because they're fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the Nook tablet was announced uh, this morning. And, Joanna, you were at the event. Um, I love the comparison chart here that you guys have on The Verge um, because it, uh, it really breaks down the Nook tablet, the Kindle Fire, the Nook. Actually, you could just you can compare any device, but the four, I think that, or the three that it uh, is very comparable to is the Kindle Fire, the Nook Color, and the iPad you got, too. Uh, you can pull up that thing by clicking there. I'm like, I want to just navigate the site. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, so I was there think? and, uh, you know, I, I thought it was actually a pretty good event. Uh, it was pretty, I was live blogging uh, during the sort of the event and I was sort of cracking up at, uh, <laughs> I think his name is William Lynch, the CEO of Barnes & Noble, sort of direct aim at Amazon. I mean, he was calling them out right and left, uh, pointing out all the things he feels is better about the, their device than than the fire, uh, which was, it was pretty hilarious actually by the end. And I actually missed the Q&A, but I heard he got pretty heated and was just sort oh. of uh, going after some of the uh, Kindle stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head by holding up the the color, the the first color, the first color. Uh, it is really is the same device, though it is a lot faster. I sort of noticed that in the hands-on time, and um, you know, they've added a few apps. So um, you know, I'm not I'm I'm not convinced yet that uh, they'll be able to go after the fire. I, though I do think they're doing some interesting stuff with um, with you know, sort of making up for the fact that they don't have content, that they don't have a content store like Amazon. So they've they've got the the Netflix integration and Hulu Plus. Um, but, you know, well, we, we shall see. Yeah. And, you know, two forty nine. what do we think about the price? It's, it's competitive. It's competitive to, yeah. it's competitive to a, a, a tablet in general. Yeah. I mean, there's so many expensive Android tablets out there. Last well, week, we just saw the HTC Jetstream, $800? Oh, no yeah. way. Well, I mean, I mean that's, I would, that's in a completely different league from this. Well, that's Is a bomb. Is it competitive to its closest competition, which is the Fire, the Kindle Fire? Oh, it's fifty yeah. dollars more than the Kindle Fire. I mean, I, I, well, I don't know. I just don't see how that that is competitive when you talk when you're talking about Amazon's kind of all around solution. Well, you know, with their cloud and that, now the, the thing is, is that also, and, and I'll do my normal disclaimer that I, I work for a company that does development of products on the kit on the Nook as well as the Kindle. So I, admittedly, I have a ho I have a horse in the game, but um, I think that there is a market that Barnes & Noble can yeah. go after of the people who say, I want to go buy books. I'm going to go to the Barnes & Noble down on, on, mm -hmm. uh, on Jericho 
a turnpike yeah. and go and go pick it up, you know, and like and they don't shop at Amazon. I mean, I'm I'm a loyal Amazon user. I love Amazon. It's fantastic. But I know people right. who only walk into Barnes and Noble and buy buy movies, buy DVDs, buy magazines, mm -hmm. buy books, buy everything at Barnes and Noble because it is the last vestige of the old store. Yeah. It's the last yeah. bookstore. And I think and they were playing that up big time today and talking about this in-store support, sort of like, yep. you know, sort of trying to pull an apple there and say, like, we've got the best in-store support. If you have a problem, you come here. I think his quote was like, oh, if you have a problem with the Kindle Fire, what are you going to do? Go to Amazon's, you know, headquarters in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, true. Uh, and you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna randomly send it back. You're going to send it back to them and hope you, I mean, the, definitely they have it on the support side, but also don't, under, and I can speak from experience, don't underestimate the in-store marketing angle because I, yeah. I, 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 we, the company I work for graphically, we did a, we did the graphic novel version of Cowboys and Aliens, the movie that came out over the summer, released it through the Barnes & Noble um, Nook. They did a whole in-store promotion around it, and it, it affected the sales. It yeah. absolutely affected yeah, the sales. Point. You know, yeah. when, when you've got people in the store going, oh, cool, I can pick that up and I can download that, and how does that work, and somebody there to show them, that's a huge human factor that Apple is doing with the Apple Store. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, it, I think yeah. it's really interesting, really interesting. I like what Barnes & Noble did today. That's well, not to mention, you, it is $50 more. Uh, you get more. It seems like you're, you're paying a little bit more to get a little bit more of your onboard storage. Yeah. Like you're, well, you're not living in, in, a, in the cloud as much as you know, somebody exactly on the what, Amazon services. Yeah. Therefore, you need more to store things on your device. Maybe that's, what they were that's a little bit up. of that differentiator. Yeah. From yeah. what I was reading, they were playing, yes. look, you don't have to be on Wi-Fi like you do on, with the Kindle Fire. You know, you can store all of this, you know, media and, and everything and, and, and take it on the go and be offline. That was another big point they were trying to mm -hmm. play up. And I thought about that. You know, I've got a Kindle Fire that's going to come my way pretty soon. And I thought, gosh, you know, I want to travel with it. I'm going to France in December, but um, hmm, will I be able to watch things on the plane? Right. I don't think so. Right. Yeah. That's kind of a disadvantage. The ex you know, the exter external storage is a big aspect yeah. of it. Um, you know, we don't, I'm sure the Kindle Fire is going to get hacked to figure, they're yeah. going to figure out how to hack and root it, but I could show you how to hack and root a nuke right now. I could show mm -hmm. you, you know, like it's really easy if you want to do that from, from a um, uh, hobbyist kind of standpoint. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, I mean, I think it's close. I think it's, I mean, yes, $50, it's a little more and I, I would have liked to see them. I mean, if they really wanted to go after Amazon, they'd figure out a way to get it at $199. Right. You know, but yeah. uh, but I think they're factoring in, you know, they're, they're factoring people who go to the store versus shipping. And th I mean, right. I think there's all these kind of different pieces. Plus, who knows how much that little hook costs? <laughs> you know, why are you guys saying And the screen is really nice. I mean, yeah. I've seen the Fire 2 and, you know, doing some side-by-side -side comparisons will obviously be the best thing to determine which has the better screen. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, this, I mean, the screen on this is really nice. Um, you know, I, I felt that way about the Fire when I saw it as well. But, um you know, I, I do, I kind of like the form factor of the Nook better. Uh, just, I, I mean, and there's something to be said for the, the fire sort of like very clean design and very sort of uh, playbookish design, if you if you will. But um, I, I really do like the, the look and feel of the of the Nook. And, and the Nook color is the Nook color isn't going away. I right. mean, so that, you know, so somebody wants a cheaper option, there you go. You know, there's no real. Well, yeah, they drop yeah. that down yeah. to 199, 199 right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. Yeah. No. Yeah, no, my biggest issue, and I, I had a meeting with Martin and Noble after the event, was sort of on the app front, you know, uh, obviously Amazon has the edge with their app store, and they have been able to sort of um, accrue more apps because they have, you know, released it for other platforms, which make it, well, for, not for other platforms, but other hardware, so you can just download the app store, right, um, which makes it, you know, a little bit more compelling for developers to go into that app store, um, but it just, it seems like they've got much more of a push behind theirs versus versus Barnes and Noble. And so, you know, sort of was pushing them on how many more apps will we see, what sorts of apps. And, you know, of course they're saying we're going to see thousands more before the end of the year. But I do think that's a, that's going to be a really big point of contention. All right, well, let's uh, move on. We, we actually talked a little bit earlier um, about the HTC Resound. Mm -hmm. uh, so we might as well let you know that was the uh, the big HTC announcement that they had last week. And we all kind of, everybody, it was worst kept secret. secret. Everybody knew that was <laughs> happening. Uh, so the HTC Resound, a.k.a. the HTC Vigor, which at one point way back when was at the top of my list. Then the Galaxy Nexus Ooh, came along. is it not Swept anymore. me off my feet. Mm -hmm. uh, 1.5 gigahertz dual core Qualcomm. Uh, LTE, of course, 4.3. 
2.3 inch super LCD uh, WVGA screen with 1280 by 720 resolution, which is very nice. I think that's the same as the Galaxy Nexus, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, since 3.5, which, if you remember last week, I got the HTC Rhyme. It has 3.5, and I like it. As far as overlays go, Sense is kind of my favorite. 3.5 is uh, pretty good, too. Uh, but it doesn't have this fancy woman on the background. Oh, oh, don't uh, you stack have it or did you change yours? That's the true representation of the lady phone. Yeah, oh, Leo. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Mine mm. doesn't, if you take my screen, mine doesn't have that lady in the Oh, yours is a man with an umbrella? No, it's it's just, you know, your typical... He changed uh, moving. it. I did nothing did of the it? sort. Yes, I did. Of course, of course <laughs> I did. He wasn't going to keep it. I like to modify my yeah, bones. For a picture of a man with an umbrella. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think we need to do a photo shoot of Jason on the beach with an umbrella. I just got, you know. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, yeah, so it, it looks like a great phone. Uh, eight megapixels with autofocus, 1080p video recording, two megapixel front facing, uh, a whole lot of internal and, and uh, micro SD storage. Um, no NFC. So that's kind of a big omission, I, I guess, if, if that's important to you. Uh, and, of course, it's not launching with Ice Cream Sandwich. Mm -hmm. But as we talked about earlier, HTC says that it will be updated sometime. Sometime. Okay, eventually. sometime. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It yeah, actually... I, was, I was actually at this event as well. I'm just a, an event. You're everywhere. Yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm not going to fill in the rest of that right there. <laughs> I was like, is she really going to say You guys that? try and keep it very PC on this uh, <laughs> podcast. Um, yeah, so I was at that event, too, and at sort of the highlight of the event was um, the Beats guy coming out, uh, what's his name, Johnny Ive, I believe, uh, and talking up the Beats integration, and so, you know, this is the first Beats uh, HTC phone coming to the U.S., and, you know, it comes with the headphones in the box and all that kind of stuff, but it was that was pretty funny as well. Um, don't think that's, like, a huge upsell of the device, but yeah, I'm interested I, I think... to see how they market it. Yeah, the jury's still out on whether the Beats actually means anything or if it's just kind of a cool thing for them to say. Yeah, that the Beats thing. Yeah, like they that, spent right? like 20 minutes talking about it. It was so good. Wow. Yeah. Johnny Iovine. He's Jimmy like the Iovine. Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy. Johnny Ive is Apple's right. product yeah. guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Again, I haven't eaten. Hey. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and they're very similar names. I will give you that. They're both J's and I's. You yeah, know? Johnny yeah. Ive. Yeah. And he was talking about how good Beats is on uh, the iPhone 4. Yeah. Or iPhone 5. It was a great event. It was pretty crazy. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> so talk about crazy. The Motorola, we got some news on the Motorola Zoom 2. Um, CNET had a great post uh, kind of over uh, giving an overview of what's coming with the Motorola Zoom 2, which are two flavors of tablets. Um, there's going to be a media edition and a normal edition, and Motorola is hoping they can have a little more success this time around than the first one, which I have no problem with with that Zoom that, that you gave me, which is, oh, good. Yeah, I like it. Yay. But uh, so the new tablets, um, they're both going to be powered by dual cores dual core 1.26 gigahertz processors running Android 3.2 Honeycomb, um, much to everybody's dismay. Um, just kidding. Uh, um, and of course, they, uh, they've got that neat, uh, interesting bezel that we saw in some product shots, mm -hmm. uh, some sneak, you know, some leaked product shots mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago um, with right. those weird kind of edges. Um, what's interesting is that uh, what I find interesting is the media edition um, is, you know, obviously clearly geared more towards entertainment. Um, it's got a 178 degree viewing angle, so more than one person person can watch it at the same time, which is great if you're on the plane and you're traveling with somebody and you guys want to share and watch something. Um, and uh, they're claiming a 20% improvement in graphics performance um, and added virtual surround sound. So it's pretty interesting uh, what they're trying to do with the Zoom in terms of trying to uh, attack the, at least with the media side, uh, as an entertainment device. Thinner and lighter, yes. which is absolutely something they had to do if they were going to put out a successor yeah, to the Zoom. Exactly. But I think this looks, I think this looks interesting. Um, yeah. I, I think they needed to come out with something that was compelling uh, for a follow-up to the Zoom because it was kind of, you know, they kind of fell on their face a little bit with and, that one. So. And what I like, going back to the Nook, we talk about the Nook because of that hook. Mm -hmm. And I think you're going to see more and more physical... You know, and doodads. You know, doodads, like whether it's the stylus, <laughs> like we're seeing here, or yeah. the, the 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 different bezel with the with the the Battlestar Galactica esque type framing. You know, with the octagon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I think we're gonna see. You know, kind of what Sony did with that with that one with the wedge. Oh, with the wedge. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to see innovations on the actual hardware that sells because that's how you're gonna differentiate in the marketplace. 
You know, because you're either going to go like Samsung and try to make it look like an iPad or and make it look, sued. oh, look, that looks different. Why is that different? And then, and then go then look. And get yeah. sued. Yeah. yeah I, mean, exactly. I mean, and also look at it. Why do we talk, why do we talk about the hook so much? It's because of the hook. The hook has no, it's purely it's designed. Nothing, yeah. It's true. purely designed. It's, it's a yeah. big talking point, whether yeah. it matters or not. Is it a big talking point? Before today, did you guys ever talk about yes, the Nook hook? A lot. Kinda yes, did. actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Ever yeah. Since. Just because, I mean, especially the original Nook had such a an interesting kind of developer community around it, you know, rooting it. And, and throwing different uh, right. custom ROMs on there. So it, it turns it into this completely different device that maybe Bar probably Barnes & Noble uh, hadn't expected or hoped. Uh, but that makes it compelling, low cost. Yeah. Hmm. I think it's time for Ron's Google TV 2.0 review. <laughs> I have been looking forward to this since you uh, emailed in all caps <laughs> I got very to me excited. on I got Friday <laughs> how excited you were got, about this update. So I can't wait to hear all about it. This is the big, you know, reveal. Little Ron, I'm tossing it back to you. I, I give it, I give it two thumbs up, five stars. It's the, it's the update I always dreamed of. What? It's fantastic. It's like it. So as so to give my story, I I, I was an early Google TV uh, fan uh, when I was working at Revision Three full time. I, we got uh, an advanced box and we were able to develop uh, for the platform. And I really kind of saw the power of it and said, okay, wow, this could be really pretty cool. But as we always talked about, it fell a little short it you know that you always got the sense that the ui wasn't quite perfect it wasn't exactly how um you know could this really be a mass market device but the 2.0 um, software upgrade which finally came through all week last week i spent going you know on my little remote saying you know system update check for new updates check for new updates if you follow me on twitter i apologize because i was doing i think i was doing twice a day updates <laughs> still no google tv update still no google tv update. but finally it downloaded and installed and i took a little video and i'm going to apologize because this is in my apartment with Ooh. my kodak Look at and, that. Um, no, it looks great. Can you actually pause it, Chad? Can you pause it? So I took it with my Kodak. So I'm, one hand, I'm holding the video camera, and the other hand, um, I'm trying to navigate it. <laughs> but um, you can go back to the video, though. Um, what's really interesting about it is that um, right out of the gate, if you look at it, um, the home navigation hovers up over on top of whatever you're doing. I, but you look behind that, you see that girl, you can set a wallpaper now. I was about to say. Yeah, yeah you, oh, which is really, awesome. really cool. So you can you can go and set a wallpaper. Um, you get that below kind of um, that menu navigation. You can choose what applications appear along the bottom. Um, you can also access all the apps that appear um, by clicking there. There also are widgets that can install in there. Here you can see the view. I hit all the apps, and so you can scroll through um, a much cleaner kind of much app kind cleaner. of uh, uh, browsing kind of experience. Um, the Netflix app, my one complaint, and this is not on Google TV, but I like the old version of Netflix that was on Google TV before this. Oh, really? I feel like they kind of took a step backwards. Um, and I apologize on, on this video, too, because my internet was being slow and quiet. But um, the, the, the UI oh, is, is slightly like the website. different. Yeah, it went more like the website. I really liked what they had done with the latest Google TV kind of update. Um, but, you know, it works great. It does exactly what you need it to. Um, you know, what I thought was interesting is that in the settings, you can choose what application to boot the Google TV to. to so when you turn it on. So if you primarily use it for Netflix, it can just automatically start up Netflix, okay. similar to the old Windows kind of startup menu kind of thing. Um, but the video is great, works excellent. Um, when you, um, I'm, I'm trying to remember what exactly was the next point in the video. <laughs> um, when you go through, uh, I'm a big user of the of, of TV. I mainly use it for there. So they've got this new TV and movies um, app, which is really cool because you can go through different movies and different television shows, and it will show you where they're available. So, for example, you clicked on a show here. I cl clicked on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It breaks it down by season, and then individual episodes tells you where it's available, whether it's Amazon or Netflix or just not available online. <laughs> um, I'm not connected to cable or I'm not connected to the antenna or anything like that, so I watch completely everything through IPTV. And so using this is great. So if I want to watch Breaking Bad, I hear so much great about it. I'm going to go check out season one. I click on here. I click buy, and I can see, okay, it's on Netflix, and it's also on Amazon. Um, and you click that, and if you go to Amazon, it launches the browser and takes you to Amazon's instant video application, mm -hmm. or it launches your Netflix application. Um, really cool. kind of interesting in that regard. There's a new um, updated YouTube interface, which is slightly similar to the YouTube lean back experience, which is neat. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm a big user of the, the media player and the, the DNLA, whatever, whatever that acronym mm -hmm. is. Um, I, so you can select your device and I map it to my compute, my desktop computer. I use views for that. And then I'm able to watch the shows that I've actually got files of. Um, what's really interesting is that you're able to, um, plug in a USB device now and access media off that. So if you have video or you have photos in the new photo app, which I'm going to get to in a moment, um, you can see, you can pull that directly from st external storage devices, which hmm. you couldn't do before 
which was mm. frustrating because I had the, yeah, the Sony device problem. with the USB port that did nothing. Right. So yeah. it's great that it finally yeah. can do that. I remember that being a, like a huge complaint. Yeah, exactly. But um, so now you can do that, which is really cool. Um, uh, Pandora, same similar app as before, but what I thought was really interesting was that you can start playing music and then go back out of the app and go use the browser, use anything else while music does play. Um, and then you can also control um, the app via the widget um, from the home screen. So, which is really, really cool. There's also notifications. Very Again, we haven't completely lost the UI interface from the phone kind of thing. Those little squares, the rectangles, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the notifications and the system settings and things like that for, uh, fall under that same kind of um, look and feel. Um, but you do get a notification every time an app needs to be updated or um, when something's happening. So when the song changes, you can have Pandora tell you that the song has changed. Um, so it, you can also turn off the notifications if you find them super annoying. Um, mm -hmm. The interesting thing uh, around with the with the widgets is that you can customize where they where they are, so you can move them around on the screen. Um, so if you want to move the Pandora widget down there, you can move the Twitter one up there. I was disappointed at the lack of widgets, though. At launch, there was only three widgets, which is Twitter, Pandora, and the clock. Um, <laughs> the clock. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, so you can see me here adding the clock All to right. it. Yeah, but it's neat. It's really easy to use. I mean, I'm using the the Sony. Uh, a gamepad right. remote and I, I'm flying around this is all me with one hand flying around the app fly, flying around the various apps using that controller did you go in the um, marketplace by any chance? yeah so the marketplace is next I get that okay. shown off Twitter and so then on the marketplace it's very still it's funny that you, you read my I mind I know I read your um, mind <laughs> the marketplace uh, definitely borrows a lot of the UI from the, mar the current marketplace on, on the web um, you can see here there's some promotional area they're bubbling some stuff up um, here the installation process is just as simple as on the web you just click install and it just starts downloading it to the, you gotta uh, agree to the permissions and then it just starts downloading it. You see the, um, the kind of description in there that's uh, the notification that's installing then it tells you when it's been installed and offers it to launch. It's it, really easy to use and really, um, really smooth. Not many apps for Google TV yet. I asked if you would uh, download yeah. the karaoke app. Did you I, do yeah, that? Yeah, I did not yet. I did not yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't not. brought myself up to that. Yeah, but. You're alone. <laughs> Nobody's going to know. You can but, just tell um, me if it's horrible or um, You can't. What I thought was interesting is through the marketplace, you can access other Android apps. Okay. Um, and But they'll limit installation based off compatibility. Okay. But what some people have done, like the Movies app by Flixster, they just made their, their phone app compatible with Google TV. Okay. Which is a little disappointing because it's not truly optimized for it. Oh, look at um, your photos. This is the new Photos app, which is really cool because not only can you access a USB device, but you can link it to your Picasa account or your oh, Flickr sweet. account. Yeah, um, that's awesome. And that's where I pulled the wallpaper. Um, and it's a big picture of me, which I quickly clicked away. But so <laughs> that, when I installed the wallpaper, I just loaded it to my Flickr and I added it to um, added it here and set, set it as the wallpaper. So wow. I don't know. I think it's great. It finally feels like a mature product. Um, it finally it's fun to use. Like I found myself yeah. just sitting on the couch, not necessarily watching TV, but playing with it. Um, I think once we start seeing more, and here you just see the settings, the boring mm -hmm. stuff. Um, once we start seeing more um, apps be developed for the Google TV kind of environment, like the Clicker app is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, there was some Fireplace app that was done that just played HD Fireplace or like. Well, you're gonna need that for the holidays. Yeah, yeah, so it's not. That. It's not the U log though. It's, it's not, not the U log. It's not. The, someone's got to do the U log. Listen, oh, open happen. call to developers. Do a Google TV U log, and I will pay for it. But um, <laughs> I will. It's the U log. It's great. Right. But um, yeah, but it's it feels like a mature product now and I just I, and I'm still exploring it I'm still getting getting the hang of it but out of the gate it, it made my TV viewing better which I think is, wow. a, is a good product. So. Kind of what it's all yeah. about. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Ron. I'm very excited. I'm excited to actually try it too whenever I get the update. The review hasn't gotten it yet as far yeah. as I know. We've been hitting update. Now I'm the one hitting update See, all now, the time. See, now fair like, play oh, now, isn't it? <laughs> like, no, we got to check. we got to check. And, oh. I'm not hitting update all the time, but I don't have a yeah. Google oh, TV well, there you device. Yeah. So. Do you yeah, have I'm one, not either. Oh, you don't? No. It's really cool. No, I'm actually trying to figure out what to get for my living room here in this new apartment. And mm -hmm. I have to say the Google TV has not even been on the list. Well, really? Uh, well, but, you know, after hearing this review, maybe it is going to be on the list. Well, it's funny because I because a friend of mine, when I was raving about it on Twitter, first off, my, my friend I am to me, and he goes, is Google paying you? And I said, <laughs> no, they're not, sadly. And then, and then he said, he said, well, should I get this? And I said, all right, well, what do you have at home? And he goes, well, I've got an Xbox, I've got a Roku box, and I've got a Vizio with widgets. And I said, you know what? You don't need this. 
Mm-hmm. You've got everything you're going to do. You've got covered. You know, like right. you, you know, you the Roku and you get the web. Yeah, exactly. Too. Well, yeah. Well, so the, the 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 one the one different advantage would be with Google TV is that you have access to the web. You have access to a browser. You could do that as you're watching TV searching. Mm-hmm. But you, if you have mm-hmm. an iPad or if you have an laptop, yeah. you can do that as well. If you've already got the Roku or if you've already got these connected devices, things like that. But if you're looking to connect your living room, I really think the Google TV is now a product that can stand on its own and actually give a little more value than some of those other. You know, I had nine different boxes. What are the prices like now? Cheap. Yeah. You can get a review for ninety nine bucks. Ninety nine right? bucks. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I mean, okay. I, I happen to. I got the. All right, it's on the list now. Nice. It's on the list. <laughs> there we go. Right, write it down right here. Well, it's funny. What a I, salesman! I, I bought. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I could sell anything. No, I bought the Sony. I bought the Sony Blu ray player because I needed a Blu ray player. Got and it. I was like, might as well get it. Um, and I was actually out running this morning, and I saw somebody with a Sony in- connected TV with your iPads? box. <laughs> no. Running with your iPad. Yeah. No, not with my iPad. <laughs> but I was out, and Sorry. I saw somebody Sorry. with the Sony connected. I'm TV. never going to be in. Bit. I'm never going to be invited back to the show. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Bring it on. But uh, you're seeing it more and more. Like if, if the Google TV is integrated into Sony's TVs themselves, right. then that's going to, you know, it's a little more interesting. So. All right. I, I Thank you song, so but, much for that review. Thumbs We're going to go back to it every single time when, you know, somebody says something about Google TV. No, no, no. Listen to Ron. <laughs> Episode 33. I, I, tell you I was looking it. for problems. And other than my other than my nitpick of the, my two nitpicks are, I don't like the Netflix UI, which they could, that's on Netflix. It's not on mm-hmm. Google. Yeah. And it's cool that you can set the wallpaper, but for the life of me, I can't get back to it. Like once you use an app, <laughs> then that app is the background because the home is the overlay. Those are the only complaints mm-hmm. I had. So. Nice. All right. All right, well, let's take a quick break and thank our other sponsor, Ford, featuring uh, available voice-activated sync app link, and which this basically enables you to control select apps from your uh, smartphone with a simple voice command while keeping your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. So with sync app link, you can do things like uh, well, like Pandora. You were talking about Pandora. You can do voice control Pandora in your car so you don't have to touch the phone while you're driving. Uh, it can listen to tweets with open beak just by asking uh, with a simple voice command and it'll read back uh, your tweets tweets to you as they come through. Um, once it's linked to Pandora, you can do things like uh, using com- uh, voice commands to you know, select your favorite station, make a new one, bookmark songs to purchase, all that kind of stuff, and uh, listen to whatever uh, stations you already have set up. It's pretty easy to do. Um, so take a, a, you know, take a look at, at Ford's site. You can check out Ford.com slash technology, and you can uh, take a look and see uh, all about OpenBeak and Sync AppLink, and, uh, you know, see, see what you think about it. You can actually find it if uh, you check out the 2012 Ford Fiesta. You can uh, see it in action and go test it out yourself. So learn more about this and other technologies Ford is bringing to its vehicles at Ford.com slash technology. We thank them so very much for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. I think you could say, listen to episode 33 of All About Android. You're like, oh yeah, I know that. But it and it would yeah, play. Exactly. Yeah. Well, anyways. Of course. There's my pitch. What happens <laughs> if you're listening to the show and then you've in the Ford Sync and then it, you get stuck in a recursive loop just now? Oh. If you're listening to episode, you know. No, it's yeah. too good for that. It's right. too good. Right. All right. All right. I'm just saying. That's so. for sure. <laughs> Let's jump into the arena. Ah. Enter. One lives. Android. Arena. All right. So, first off. I'd like to kick things off by taking a look at last week's poll. And uh, let's see here. It was another grab bag episode. And I have I've saved the discovery until now. It looks like Circle Launcher. <gasps> no way. Wow. It was a close race. Wow. Circle Launcher, 35% of the votes. Uh, second place was MX uh, Video Player with 24%. I'll take the silver. And then a tie for third with Minecraft Pocket Edition and Ivona uh, Text-to-Speech, which I guess I thought that Minecraft had a passionate enough audience that it was going to get voted to the top. But I, yeah. I'd like I to thank not. the uh, United States and Brazil and looks like Chile. Listen, Canada and... really likes their video players. <laughs> That's all. Canada, Australia, and South Africa. You're my people. Ethiopia loves me too. Uh, Nigeria, thank you so much. Uh, oh, France voted with Germany. me. Germany. That's unfortunate. <laughs> This is what we do, uh, Joanna. We look at our poll and we go country by country and go, oh my God, thank it's, you so I'm much. I'm definitely not going to win. I'm really <laughs> upset. It's, it's basically. Oh. I might change my app selection. Why now don't to you change? More, you, if you want, you change. Mine's not, very, mine's not very global friendly. It's okay. actually not even very. I well, mean, it's. I had you going first because you're our guest, but you know what? You can go last and come out with the zinger. Do you want it? We'll, 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 let, you, we'll let you pick a different one if you want. Do you want to do that? 
Yeah. Now okay. I'm going to the, the market and finding like the highest rated app. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you're in it to win it. She really is. All right. All right. We'll start with you, Jason. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and do mine then. Uh, mine is, uh, it was actually, I had not used this app until last week. It was one of Amazon's featured uh, free apps last week. So it was week. mine. That, that and uh, I got to say, I'm really happy because I logged on like really late this day. I can't remember when it was. It was like Wednesday or Thursday. Like right before going to bed, I was like, oh yeah, I didn't check it out. I'm really happy I did. Uh, it's called Ultimate Guitar Tabs. So I know I'm not going to win this week because this is really specialized to musicians, but it's a really good app. Here's the here's the strange thing is that through Amazon, it's a $7.99 app. Uh, through Google Market, as you can see, the Android Market, it's $2.99. Uh -oh. That's because some of the really good mm. features that I'm going to show off um, are in-app purchases. So I think you can get I this see. version of this uh, through the Android market that's just the tools if you don't want the tablatures. Um, there, there's a few different ways you can get it. But I know for $79.99 on Amazon, you can get the whole shebang. So I'll go ahead and show it right here. Basically, it has a guitar, bass, just tons of different types of uh, tablatures that you can get. If you're a musician, if you don't know what tablatures are, it's essentially it's a way to learn other people's songs and play them so um, if we'll go to the top 100 tabs you sign up for an account with ultimate guitar and that allows you to kind of sync between devices and sync between the web uh, for different uh, you know tabs that you've set as a favorite of yours or whatever so someone like you by Adele so if I loaded this up it would show you the tab and it might look like Greek and you know foreign <laughs> foreign to, to those who have never used a tab tablature um, you know, or read tabs before, but essentially it's a way for you to learn how to play this, uh, play whatever the instrument is the tab is on. The app actually allows you to transpose it. Uh, you can also set up this auto scroll, which if you time it right, then say you're playing, you hit play and hopefully it, you know, it, it follows the tablature so you never have to actually do anything with your hands while you're playing the guitar or whatever. It kind of follows for you. Now, that's that's cool, and the tablature stuff is definitely what Ultimate Guitar Tabs is, is all about because it's in the name. But that's not the reason why I love this app because I don't really do tabs a whole lot. I used to, but not anymore. I'm really down for the tools here. So it's got three really cool tools, and I'll just show you really quick. They're pretty straightforward. One's a guitar metronome, so you can set up you know, just your typical metronome with any different um, kind of time signatures that you want. And that's pretty sweet. You could also tap out the tempo if you want uh, for a quick and dirty kind of, you know, metronoming. Um, guitar tuner, which it has a couple of different ways that you can do this. It has this way that allows you to kind of just play whatever the note is. Oh, wow, I almost picked that on a D. Um, and it will tell you kind of where you're at and you can kind of zero in on the zero point. Or you can change this mode and you can, I don't know if you can even hear that, but you can use it to play the note that you're tuning to. And yeah. of course, if you need to set that into different, uh, oh, I guess this is the loop mode, but if you need to, what was it? Yeah, it was this. So if you wanted to do different tunings, you can go in here and select the different types of tunings that you want to uh, dial in and do that. But the thing I love about this, this is like, this was enough reason for me to want to do it is this chords library. Because so often, if, if you're a musician, maybe you identify, and if you don't, you're like, all right, I've already fast forwarded. But when I'm writing music, I often am looking for a particular chord that I just don't know how to play it. And so this is a really good way to kind of go through and find all the different combinations and different keys and scales and everything. You can just dial it in and then it'll show you on the guitar how you finger out that chord basically. And I, I can't wait to start using this. Like um, it's been a while since I've made some music because my space was occupied by my daughter. Uh, but, but hopefully at a new place, I'll have a studio again and I'll be able to use this to kind of come up with some new different chord ideas. So that is Ultimate Guitar Tabs. I think, personally, I think it's worth it just for this feature alone because that's just a really cool, well-implemented way to do something like that. And uh, I, I don't expect to win this week. Yeah, that, that was a niche one. Know. It's a niche one. It's it a is. total yeah, niche yeah. one. Yeah. It's a total niche one, but I love it. Uh, so check it out, Ultimate Guitar Tabs. It reminds me that I can't play guitar. 
Well, you exactly. could try. You could learn, learn chords. No, I tried. It's it's oh, tragic. That's what I'm thinking of when I tried to learn how to, or teach myself how to play guitar yeah. in college, and I was like looking at guitar tabs, and then I gave up after like five minutes. I'm right there yeah. with you. I, I can play the opening uh, to Stairway and to <laughs> a Soul Asylum song, and that's it. So, yeah. Oh, Soul Asylum. Yeah, yeah. They, they were talking. Yeah, that was ninety Soul Asylum in here. Three, maybe. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was. Runaway train, maybe? I don't remember. Runaway no. train. I'm okay. revealing lots about myself tonight. Yeah, I, I, actually, yeah, yeah. can we go to ronlovesgossipgirl.squarespace.com? Because it is awesome. I'm sorry, Jason. I actually went there, and they updated it during your review, and oh. I almost lost it. So I wasn't laughing at your review. Oh, I just laughed at that Photoshopped. That is it looks awesome. really good. Look at you. And you've got, like, the button-up shirt and the white shirt you're looking on. Is that Chuck Bass's body? I think it is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They put your face on there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Did a very good job. I didn't know you were awesome. in yeah. Gossip Girl. I'll have to yeah, whoever it. did that, very good job. Very weird. Yeah. I don't know where you got the photo from. Or is it just the show? I guess I don't know. But yeah, anyway. Google Images, I'm sure. Good job. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Yeah, oh, I think that, the should, way. that should be my entry to the arena, the the uh, Ron Lowe's Gossip Girl site, because I'll win. <laughs> you should just you do go. Squarespace, yeah. you there know, you uh, as your app, yeah. and then you that, you would yeah. win. All right. Oh, right. by the way, Soul Asylum Runaway Train is in there. Just, is it? Oh, no, yeah. here you go. So, you, you know, go. you could learn. I could. Yeah, no. All right, let's move on. All right, well, I guess I'll go next. And uh, this just hit the marketplace Sunday, I think. Uh, it is Atari's Greatest Hits, which is deceptively free in the Android marketplace. But what happens is you get only one game with that, which I believe is Missile Command. And if you want to buy individual games, whoa, look at that, chat. If you want to buy individual games, they're 99 cents for all the various Atari uh, games that you might know already and love. Or you could get the entire catalog of 99 games for 10 bucks, which is what That's I did. That's smart. That's mm -hmm. smart Yeah, put pricing. it in the marketplace yeah. for free yeah. and then, um, you know, charge per game, depending upon maybe you don't want all the games. I went ahead and got all of them just because I wanted to show it all to everybody. And, you know, I'm probably going to spend some time. First of all, oh, I don't even know. Oh, this is cool. First of all, I love the uh, the music. Can you hear it? A little 8-bit action. Bam, bam. And then, so here I'm is in the arcade. Crystal Castles? Oh, yeah. 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 So here's Crystal Castles right here. I've been playing a lot of Centipede. So here's arcade mode. And you've got all these games. I just, I'm digging the loop of this, uh, this, this music. Um, if you wanted to go to Atari Classic, let's see here. Here we go. Check this out, Ron. Yars oh, Revenge, cool. Warlords. A lot of stuff. Oh, they do have video pinball. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Ooh. Sorry, I, I didn't see that earlier and I was a little disappointed. Um, video checkers. Yeah. That's pretty nice. I mean, let me turn this down. Whoa. Ah, turn, it off. Be, turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let me just show you. I mean, and the game looks like it did back in the day. I'm going to play a little centipede right here. I haven't played it on the tablet, so sorry if I uh, mess up here. But uh, let me just show you what it sounds like. Let's see, it's a little weird. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. More or less. Okay. So this is Centipede that you would play in the arcade. You just don't have the trackball. And it sounds Dude. just like oh, yeah. the actual game. That's really interesting that they, they, they I mean, of course, they, you know, you can get a ROM emulator or whatever to, oh, to yeah. replay the games. But they actually, you know, that in terms of the interface and like the little Centipede thing at the bottom, mm -hmm. like that's pretty cool. So that's, oh. yeah, I think they've had this for iOS for a while. Yeah, they have. Yeah. But uh, thank goodness it's here now. I want to quit. Any game that, <laughs> do you guys have any uh, requests? I don't know how to play Crystal Dude, Castles. Crystal Castles is great. I don't know how to play this. Do you want to play yeah, it, Ron? Crystal Castles is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, don't, don't lose the uh, TV You're, there. All right, I got you. All right. Okay, sure. I'll go to my shot? Oh, okay. go to your shot. Okay. I'll just have Rusty. Ron's going to sell this it for, for me. You're selling this for Eileen, Ron. I, 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 what are you Crystal doing? Crystal Castles, I'm all about. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. my God. Look at that. I used to play this game in the ground round for hours. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I remember this. Yeah, you collect all the little dots and... Yeah, they look really like they authentic, look, right? Yeah, they look like what they should. You should see the bowling app. Like. It's totally as if you, you know, it has the little joystick, um, Atari home controller joystick, and then you yeah. move it to move the guy, and then you hit go, and then the ball goes. So <laughs> ten bucks for the whole suite. The whole suite. That's that's not bad. That's quite a few games in there too. This is actually again the first time I played it on the tablet, and um, 
I, I just love playing games on a tablet, preferably so. I mean, if if I can, mm -hmm. um, and it and it plays pretty well. This is cool. <laughs> yeah, this, is pretty cool. <laughs> this might be Ron's app too. Well, I'm, I was more of an intelligent. This is definitely too. gonna win. <laughs> I know, right? yeah, it totally is. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think about, oh, am I gonna zone. win this? But people are like, oh, you know, the the uh, one star reviews are the price because people are like nine ninety nine. Yeah, exactly. But it's like I think that, I mean no, because honestly, because they're not. I you know like if you only like a certain game, then then you only pay for that exactly. one game. It's ninety nine cents. That's what great. are you playing now? Battle Zone. Oh, there you go. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Battle Zone was the best. Yeah, this is this is really well done. It's great. I I have to say, um, I've only had it for a couple days, but I I just wanted the whole collection. I'm like, bring it on. I don't want to just get one game. Yeah, because you know you'll play it. This is a good time waster here and there. You oh know? yeah, yeah. It's got the original breakout and everything. I mean, it's it's all there. Oh, that's it's great. Cool. So there you go. Atari's greatest hits. For free, you can download and just Pong, kind of classic Pong. Classic Pong. You is can on show there. those of you with kids. You can say like, "This is the one that started it all." <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Yeah, and then Breakout, I think, is in there too. Oh yeah. Wow. So. You see, I'm, I'm more I'm more enthused by the arcade aspect than the Atari because, like I said, I was an Intellivision kid. Uh huh. Um, you know, but they don't have Intellivision on uh, Android yet, though, unfortunately. Someday. Anyways, thank you, Atari. I'm very yeah. happy to have this. And I Sweet. think I spent ten dollars. Uh, well. <laughs> That's ten dollars well spent. I, I think, think yeah. so. Yeah. Cool. All right, Ron. I'm just voting for yours. <laughs> I'm boring productivity, like manage your phone app. Um, so similar to Jason, um, uh, one of the Android free apps that I da weeks ago though it wasn't last week, but it was it was a while ago. Um, it was an app called Superbox Pro, hmm. and uh, mainly it's a phone management application, um, which I found. Uh, it's one of those things where I installed it and then I never used it and it just kind of sat there and then one day I was on the bus I'm like, oh, what does this do? And I started playing with it I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty powerful. Um, oddly enough, uh, it's not, Superbox Pro is only available on Amazon the people who hmm. make it have a different app available on the Android Marketplace that's called something different and looks slightly different. Hmm. Um, and actually, Chad, the, the link is there in column E. Um, but it, it's slightly different but similar. I didn't get to play with the Android Market one, so I'm only reviewing Yeah, it's called Super A-Tool Box Cache Battery. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> all, your apps belong to, all your apps belong to <laughs> us. But... Um, <laughs> Um, so that's the, the so if you're looking for it in the Android Marketplace, look for a Super A tool. But um, uh, but yeah, so let me pull this up and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. So essentially, what it is, you get a bunch of different apps, uh, diff a bunch of different little um, functions in it that give you information about your phone, applications about your phone, battery related stuff, and others. So on the information side, there's a memory CPU manager. So I can see how much, sorry, my phone's a mess. I should have cleaned it. Um, you can see how much memory you're using up, how much memory is left in the, in the CPU. Um, and you could set certain thresholds and you could also hit free memory and it will clear out stuff. Um, it'll wipe it kind of clean. Uh, it'll stop dead processes. Um, so it's one of those, um, one of those kind of apps that let you kind of manage your phone a little better. But the killer app for me that I use it for is a app within it that's called um, app to sd And what it will do is it will, it will uh, go through all of your apps, scan all of them, and then identify which ones are um, can be moved to the SD card. Okay. Um, because I don't know if you're like yeah, if you're like me, for some reason I just want to move them all to the SD card, and that's why they're actually now all in the SD, SD card. But um, it will show you all the various apps. It will show you how large they are, what the size is, and then you just tap on it, and it goes into the app manager, and then you can choose move to SD card. And so it's an easy way to manage your apps um, as they appear on the SD card. It also shows you which ones exist only on the phone only um, for whatever reason. Um, then beyond that, um, there's a great uh, uninstaller and installer application. So if you're installing other APKs or you want to uninstall applications quickly, uh, um, quicker than doing them through the st stock kind of version, um, this is great. Um, there's also a way to back up all your apps um, and a way to manage your cache. It will um, show you all the various apps that use a memory cache and how big it is. Uh, okay. So in, in this particular case, you know, I can, um, you know, fa Facebook Messenger is given, you know, five meg. Uh, the browser is four meg. Food spotting is three meg. So I can choose which ones to um, to flush the cache for. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's kind of, and you clear them all, clear one at a time. It gives you more kind of uh, man, uh, power to manage your cache. Um, there's a task killer, which we've talked about in previous episodes that you don't really need. 
a task killer anymore so mm -hmm. much, but it's there. Um, as well as a, there's a neat little file manager. One of my one of my biggest uh, kind of frustrations around uh, I like to get access to the file system, and so. Um, Actually, being able to look at the various folders on my phone and be able to access them is pretty cool. Um, and this does it in a neat little kind of visual kind of way. So, um, yeah. So, so you can only get this through the Amazon App Store, though? You can only get this version through the Amazon App Store. And I forget how much it was. I got it for free when it was the app of the day. Is that where you shop for apps? Sometimes. Sometimes? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I have no loyalty. I'll go where the deals are. Um, <laughs> like the free app of the day. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, and I, is it like three bucks in the Amazon App Store? Check, can you pull that up again? It's uh, three ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, it's three ninety nine. Um, it was a great freebie, that's for sure. Um, I'm not sure if I would pay three ninety nine for it um, because a lot of the stuff, basically what it does, it takes a lot of functions that you can do on the phone already, but just puts them all into one place and makes it easier to manage. Okay. So... Uh, <laughs> And Joanna Very thinks cool. that's funny. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm delirious at this point. I'm so hungry. I know. Which is I feel so bad. I'm like, oh, we should have given this Joanna is, time to eat. I, I know. I should. No, I. Well, we were going to start at what time? Eight? <laughs> I know. I know. I know. But even then, I was like, oh, I'll eat after, which is too late to eat. <laughs> but this is a good segue into my app, okay, which good. is really not that exciting. But because all I do right now is uh, work, sleep, and eat. Uh, my app is Seamless Web, which, again, not going to be a huge hit. Can I, do you guys want to show it over there? Because I yeah. can, like, barely Yeah, absolutely. Show it here. I'll pull it up here. I have it. It's really not that interesting. It's just, like, <laughs> a really great way to order food really fast. And literally, <laughs> it's like, the oh, you were like, what app are you guys, like, what app are you using really lately? And I was like, this is the only app I use right now. Uh, this, making phone calls, uh, Gmail, and uh, that's that's basically it. So you, you just order food. Oh, that's, I mean, and how <laughs> fast does it normally happen? I mean, it happens in like two minutes. I mean, I ordered my dinner here. That's getting cold. Uh, it came in like 15 minutes. <laughs> you know, it's a good app. You can, you can search by food category and um, see what other features there are. We you can, can put in multiple here. addresses. So I've got my address at the office and I have my address at my apartment. Does it remember? Seamless your Web for those that I don't. I don't know if they have it in San Francisco. They, I think they. Yeah, we do. Yeah, do we have it here. Yeah, you we do. Have so yeah. for those that don't have it in their city, um, you should still vote for me, even though you might not have it. <laughs> um, <laughs> is uh, basically just like a, a assortment of menus for takeout, and you can just input it there, and it charges your credit card, so you don't have to constantly get out your credit card or do oh, it over the good. phone. Do, does it remember your previous orders? Yes, it does. It yeah, because that, that that's a, I, and I teed that up for you because I knew it did. Because um, that's a function that I love. Because I get <laughs> thank this, you, thank you. You're gonna be, you're gonna be upset when I win. <laughs> <laughs> but um, though I know it's hard to beat your task manager, but. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, that's a function I really like because I order the same thing from the Chinese food place every time. Oh, and you just, do? Okay. You just yeah. hit order. You know, like I, you know, I was walking home once and I'm like, order it. I don't have to, it's super easy to do. And so, yeah. Yep. And there's ratings and, uh, yeah. It's I'm really, going to download this. Sweet, I got to say. I'm like actually going to download it. It's my favorite app right now because I, I like food and right now all I can think about is food. So. Okay. Yep. Well, we'll wrap this up for you so that you can eat your food instead of it getting. <laughs> she's, she's, my new favorite, she's my new favorite guest. <laughs> I don't feel like, like I'm not. We, we only, you can only be on the show when you haven't eaten, though. <laughs> That's that we need you edgy. You know, this actually happens to me a lot, even when I go on the Verge podcast. Like, it, it happens, like, you know, you'll start later, and then it ends up going later than you expected. And I'm like, yeah. why did I not have a snack before this? You know what's even worse is that um, I occasionally do a food uh, foodie podcast, and ah. when you're hungry going into that, an hour later, you're, you're like, yes. why did I eat first? Yes. It's not a good scenario. That's so. not good. Yeah. No. All right, well, let's uh, let's wrap this up so everybody can eat because I think I'm getting really, really hungry. Can I actually yeah. mention one thing? And yeah. it's oh, been yeah. coming up in the chat room here and yeah. people have been asking me on Twitter if I was going to talk about the Asus Transformer Prime. And I'm not oh. really sure why I would talk. There's There was no news on it yet this week, though. There's been a ton of leaks. Um, it is supposed to be announced or launched on Wednesday. So... My assumption is we'll hear more about that later this week, but for those that, you know, don't, like a short introduction to the, the product is it's supposed to be the first quad-core mm. uh, tablet 
obviously going to run honeycomb uh, at first and then going to run ice cream sandwich. And it's similar to the first transformer in that it has a dock, uh, a keyboard dock with a battery and all that cool stuff. Um, but you, yeah, hopefully we'll hear about it more this week. Uh, did you like the original Transformer? The reason why a lot of people in our chat room are probably asking is because they've been asking us to review it. We're going to have a product person in-house pretty soon that will be able to keep up with the uh, requests. You just have the, me on. Oh, yeah. We'll just have you on <laughs> instead. But um, Yeah, because they were like, what do you think? And we're like, we don't have it yet. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Look at there the it is. Prime. Yeah, so, I mean, I loved the first Transformer for, mm -hmm. like, the form factor and the battery life. The battery life was really, really good with mm -hmm. the, you know, the battery and the keyboard attached. Um, and it was definitely one of the first tablets I felt like, like, oh, I can replace a laptop. You know, I could take this away instead of a laptop for a little bit of time. Oh, um okay. Yeah, and I saw this also a few weeks at, at, at the AGD conference, and it definitely looks really sleek, a lot thinner. Uh, they're sort of borrowing some of the design from the uh, the Ultrabook that they just put out, which is a Windows laptop. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely, I think we'll probably hear more about it, you know, late this week or early next week. Um, you know, just sort of at this point, waiting to hear the pricing and where it will be available. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, good. Right on. All right. Thank you very much. Now that I cut off the end of your show and I made the show longer. <laughs> no, you know. we're doing fine. We're doing fine. Although I think we have to do the poll link, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. do that real quick. So yeah. um, so to vote on your favorite app from this week's arena, go to bit.ly slash vote AAA33. See, I changed it up again. <laughs> bit.ly slash vote AAA33. And you can vote on your favorite. Ultimate guitar tabs, Atari's greatest hits, Superbox Pro, and Seamless Web. Yikes. Atari's run away with it, running away yeah. with it. There's course, only four. There's only four. Hey, listen, five, that's, a, oh, seven that's a good early that's indicator. Trend, yeah. Ultimate guitar tabs is zero. Yes. That's oh, no, a, there you go. You got to vote. Indicator. There you go. Uh, yeah. Next Seamless week. Web just I know. Surge, See, surging. food. Food is big. The real time thing. I could just sit here for hours and watch it. Food is a big deal. <laughs> uh, next week, we're going to do another grab bag episode. We're actually going to do a full feedback episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you guys want to uh, send us your questions, comments, everything, we're going to do nothing but answering your feedback, unless there's some Ooh. big, amazing, revolutionary news that we got to talk about. I we'll can't cover take it another bit. announcement. I can't tell. I'm, I'm really announcing <laughs> it out. I mean, I, me too. I, I, I mean, I'm sure Joanna and you guys are in it way more than I am. But between, uh, between the tech industry and the comics industry, I just can't take this news. <laughs> I just need a break. Stop That's why we're taking a break. Yeah. We're going to do a, a feedback episode episode yeah. so send us your emails <laughs> aa at twit.tv and joanna thank you so much for joining us we're so sorry that you're starving <laughs> i no i i am i apologize to all the viewers and the listeners here uh that i got a little bit cranky here at the end <laughs> i might have made fun of a uh task manager app uh, that wasn't very nice. That's okay. And uh, I promise next time I come back on, I will have eaten and uh maybe drank something and um Hey, you're a, That's you're all a I can promise. You're a trooper. Uh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> all good. Joanna, why don't you go ahead and plug whatever you like? I know The Verge launched, so it'll probably be that, but anything. Go for it. That is uh, The Verge. And Seamless Web, of course, but The Verge. <laughs> all right. TheVerge.com. So, we've got, uh, you know, definitely got a ton of Android news. We actually have an Android hub, uh, which is pretty cool. And we just sort of, you know, congregate all the Android news there. But uh, obviously, tons of tech and consumer electronics news all the time, 24 hours a day. Uh, you, you just can't, it's just never ending, nonstop. Awesome. So that's the verge. Like the food at Seamless oh, Web. No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Seamless Web. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, Joanna. It was a pleasure having you on. Uh, Ron, go ahead and plug. Sure, yeah. You can find everything uh, that has to do with me at about.me slash ronxo. Uh, you can get links to my Twitter, Facebook, Google+, all the fun stuff there. And check out uh, my day job at Graphically, where we've where we got graphic novels available on the Nook, as well as mm. on uh, Amazon and uh, iOS and a whole bunch of fun stuff there. That's all be found at graphically.com. And you could tune into Gossip Girl every Monday night on the CW. Yes, don't forget, Ron loves Gossip Girl. <laughs> Squarespace.com. There's another interesting uh, picture at the very no, end. No, that, of one, that, that one's disturbing. It's disturbing. <laughs> don't, Chad, don't. Yeah, trust he me. He doesn't want, yeah, yeah, you could just go there if you want to <laughs> see it. Uh, and I'm Eileen Rivera. You could find me on Twitter at Eileen TV or on Google Plus at G plus .to slash Eileen TV. It's not oh, hard. There we go. No, it's spelled wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. G Pulse. G Pulse. Um, All right. <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter. I'm Raygun01 or about.me slash Jason Howell. That's it for this week. Uh, send us a voicemail for next week's all feedback episode, 347 Show AAA. You can send us an email 
aaa at twit.tv uh, or video mail as well. Uh, we'll take those as well. Uh, Twitter, uh, you can find the show at Android Show. Show notes can be found at twit.tv slash aaa. And finally, you can catch us live usually every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. I'm starving. I'm going to eat this microphone. All right. All right. I, could, I, could, I could go for a meal. All right. Yeah, let's <laughs> we'll go. See you guys I have one week. right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks again, everybody. Bye. Bye. Go eat, Joanna. Joanna, you got me hungry. <laughs>